I'm going to talk you through uh, this section, which I think is probably the most complicated section, really, of the Democratic Athens uh, module that we study. So we're going to have a look at Cleisthenes, um, who is really coming to power in about 510 BC. Just a quick reminder of so let's just have a very quick uh, revision of what had happened politically under Solon. Um, of course, the kings are gone um, and the Areopagus who advised the kings actually remain, however, and the Areopagus consists of ex-archons. The assembly has got no political power yet, but they are a gathering of soldiers. Solon was to introduce a standard measure which is called the Medimnoi, about 55 litres, and he links the amount produced in terms of Medimnoi by land and trade to political office. So if you remember rightly, the Pentecostioi Medimne and the Hippes class could now become archons. And now archons didn't just make money in land or trade. So if the Areopagus are ex-archons, they're no longer just nobles owning land. They could also be from the business or traded classes. And that, of course, is going to weaken uh, the hold of the nobles um, on, um, on power in Athens. What happened after Solon? There have been an emergence of three rival groups with a geographical basis, hadn't there? If you remember rightly, there were the uh, the coastal groups who had done quite well out of Solon's reforms because you could now uh, make your money out of trade and then go to the Areopagus and sit as an archon. Um, you've got the nobles who are not very happy because Solon um, freed some of the um, people that they had enslaved. And you've got the poor who are not particularly happy with Solon because although that they had been um, freed from uh, owing so much debt to the nobles, um, they hadn't been given any land. So Solon's reforms really leave Athens in this kind of um, strife. Um, and after that, there's this emergence of three rival groups, you know, coast, uh, hill for the poor people and the plain for the nobles. And the poor people who had lost a lot of land, um, who had no land really, but had been freed, um, attached themselves to Pisistratus, who was a tyrant uh, at Athens. And Pisistratus was followed by his sons, Hippias and Hipparchus. So who was Cleisthenes? Well, he's actually a senior member of the Alcmenid clan, so therefore a noble who had been exiled under Pisistratus, the tyrant's son, Hippias. He was possibly the archon in around 525. I'm too tired. So what was an Athenian citizen? Uh, an Athenian citizen was a male adult over the age of 18 and free born. You've got to have a citizen mum and a citizen dad. And you've got to be able to prove that your dad was from a tribe or a deem, as the Athenians would call it. So the adult population of Attica, and that includes Athens, who are citizens, is only 10 to 20 percent. And they were the ones that were called the demos. OK, the demos. Women and slaves and resident foreigners were actually excluded from citizenship at this point. So if you remember rightly under Solon, the big issue had been that um, the country had really split itself up. Athens and Attica had split itself up geographically, hadn't it? You know, um, coast, city and plain. And that was partially because of the tribal system. Um, uh, there were four tribes in um, Athens and Attica at the time. Um, and they were all based around geographical areas. Um, and Cleisthenes basically gets rid of that uh, geographical tribal system. He gets rid of the four Ionic tribes and he divides Athens into three geographical locations, city, coast and inland. And he needs to um, 
undermine uh, that geographical uh, stronghold uh, that the tribes actually had. So what he does is he splits up, and I'll show you a, um, a diagram of this in a minute, he splits up each geographical location into 10 sectors called the Triti, and each Triti is made up of four to five villages. The Tritis then fed into the new tribes that Cleisthenes actually set up. So uh, hopefully you can see here uh, that what he has done is he split um, the split attic up into these areas. A, as you can see from the bottom, are coastal areas, the areas around the coast, um, and B is the inland treaties there hopefully you can see there and then c is a city so a b c so he's actually split this up uh, into a number of different areas hasn't he and what he's going to do is he's going to take a little bit from a a little bit from b and a little bit from c and now found new tribes and that is going to be so a b and c together three of them tritty try uh, is going to uh, create uh, a new tribe and that's going to undermine the um, geographical hold that the tribe the four tribes had had in athens prior to this so hopefully this makes it a little bit clearer uh, as you can see he's taken a little bit from a, which was the coast, a little bit from B, which was inland, and a little bit from C, and those are called trities. Okay, so A, B, and C, tritty. Okay, or tribe if you want to call it that. Tritty or tribe. So it takes a little bit from A. Uh, the coast, a little bit from B inland, a little bit from C, um, and he creates something called a triti, a tribe. And there were actually 10 tribes, and they were named after the great heroes of uh, Athens. So uh, please don't worry too much about the names of these heroes and the names of the tribes. What really matters is that you understand that Cleisthenes has broken the power of the four geographical tribes by splitting Athens into coast, inland and city, and a little bit from the coast, a little bit from the inland, and a little bit from the city has created this triti or this tribe, and there are 10 of these tribes. And these 10 tribes each send 50 men to the Boule or the Council of 500, which we will come on to in a minute. OK, so what's happening here? Under Solon, then, the ex-archons, the nobles, had power and sat in the Areopagus. However, uh, something has changed a little bit. The Areopagus has now just become a religious and homicide court. They are ex-archons, but after Solon, the archons can be from landed classes and trade. They are starting to lose power. Each of these 10 tribes are going to be electing a strategos, a general, so they don't need archons or the Areopagus anymore. And that is going to mean that the Areopagus, if I just flip back one slide in a second, uh, the Areopagus uh, and the archons are going to start to lose power in favour of these tribes, those tribes that you saw on the previous slide. Each of those 10 tribes are now electing a new strategos. It's the strategos that now starts to get the power. The generals now start to get to the power. Uh, the 10 tribes are electing those uh, generals rather than nobles sitting in the Areopagus. And the Areopagus then starts to lose power. So each of those 10 tribes that um, Cleisthenes uh, creates uh, then send 50 men to what's called the Council of 500. So 10 tribes sending 50 men gives us our Council of 500. Solon may, if you remember rightly, have set up a Council of 400 uh, and it had 50 citizens per tribe. Members had to be over the age of 30. 
It is open to all of the classes except for the Thetis class. So this is not full democracy yet. What you have is you have 10 tribes, each electing a strategos. It has meant that the Areopagus has started to lose its power. Um, but if you think about it, if the Thetis class cannot send people to the Council of 500, the Boule, this is not full democracy yet. Not all citizens have uh, a say in the state. So the term of office for the Boule is one year. You can't be a member twice in a row and you could only be a member twice in your lifetime. Meetings of the Boule are actually every single day day so it did mean that not you know only those uh, 500 people uh, actually uh, were um, having some form of say at the moment the boule then is an advisory council to the assembly 50 boule members so each one of those 10 tribes took a month to be on in charge of Athens itself, you know, so you, you get the Council of 500, but they are, each one of those 10 tribes has got 50 people going to it, and each month they are responsible for the day-to-day, -day. a single tribe is responsible for the day-to-day -day running of ancient Athens. So uh, a prytony is called, a, it is another name for a lunar month, and there are 50 Boule members from each tribe, and they took it in turn to act as a standing committee. Um, for a month of a period approximately 36 days or a lunar month. So therefore there are 10 months uh, in the Athenian calendar. And each one of those months, um, a part of the boule was uh, in control of Athens. The order in which they served was established by lot, not by vote uh, at the beginning of each period. All 50 members then live in the tholos. Each day, one of the 50 members is chosen by lot as a chairman for the 24 hours and the chairman presided over all meetings of the Aboule and the assembly that day. All this simply means is that they are the tribe on duty for the month. So, you know, you might be uh, the Seacrops tribe and it might be the Seacrops tribe that have got those 50 people that are actually doing the day to day business for the month. And uh, the, the Boule itself didn't um, meet as often. So what was the Boule, the Council of 500? Just a, a quick uh, reminder of what's going on here. Hopefully this is a summary slide. After Cleisthenes, um, he gets rid of the four tribes which were based on geographical location and he splits Athens up into 10 tribes. Each one of those 10 tribes send 50 men to the Boule. The Athenian year is split into 10 Prytanies or months and each tribe takes their turn to rule Athens for one month or Prytany if you want and become members of the executive committee and live in the Tholos house. Citizens have to be over the age of 30 to serve as councillors and can only do so twice in a lifetime. They prepare the agenda for the assembly. They meet to vote on what to put uh, to the assembly for a vote. The boule at this point under Cleisthenes is open to all classes, but not the Thetes. So the Areopagus was losing power under Cleisthenes, but the boule has started to gain power. The other main thing that you need to know under Cleisthenes, this perhaps is a little easier to remember than, uh, you know, Prytanes and Trites. Uh, and, and the boule is something called ostracism. Ostracism is an annual vote to banish one of the prominent Athenian citizens for 10 years. It's a safeguard to prevent tyrants or those becoming too powerful. He was not guilty of a crime and he didn't lose his property and even the family were allowed to stay in Attica. So if there's a politician you don't like, you can actually do what's called ostracize them, get rid of them under Cleisthenes. Uh, and he was not allowed to, he, basically he left Athens for 10 years. His family, however, allowed to stay in Attica. They're not treated like criminals. It happens in December once a year when uh, the assembly votes on whether or not to hold an ostracism. And if they voted for an ostracism, then they schedule for February or March. In the assembly, they wrote the name of the citizen they wanted to ostracize on, on pottery. Pottery is called an ostracon. 
If there were less than 6,000 votes, uh, a quorum, then it is invalid. So you've got to have 6,000 votes to get rid of um, people um, uh, or to ostracize people. Uh, if, you know, there was a quorum here, the 6,000 votes, then that guy, you know, that politician had to be, that citizen had to be uh, exiled for 10 years. Anybody could be ostracized. Um, and in the Potter's Quarter, there are 190 of these ostracon with the name Themistocles written on it. Uh, it appears that his opponents had actually created these ostracon in advance, hoping to, to get rid of um, Themistocles. The assembly then, uh, under Cleisthenes, this is a policy making body of the state and in theory it's open to any male citizen over the age of 18. The meetings are held four times a Brittany, that is 40 times a year. They're held on the Nix, which is a hill that can hold up to 6,000 votes, although there are about 30,000 members in total. Anybody could speak at a meeting, although good oratory skills are essential, that's good speaking skills are essential, and initially voting is done by a show of hands. So the assembly is also starting to gain power. The assembly is basically all Athenian and Attican citizens, including the Thetes. If you remember rightly, the Thetes couldn't sit in the boule. They've now got the ability to ostracize a powerful Athenian citizen, providing there is a quorum of 6,000. The strategoi um, are 10 generals appointed each year, one per tribe, 10 tribes, one, uh, 10 strategoi. To become a general, you have to be over the age of 30. You have to be nominated by each of the new deem assemblies. And unlike other offices, you could be nominated year after year. So uh, like Pericles from 443 to 429. Their main task is to administer and command the Athenian army and the Athenian navy. So if we just summarise Cleisthenes quite nicely, you've got the power of the four tribes broken. These ten tribes are created with people taken from the city, the coast and inland. They are called a treaty, you know, with the three, the city, the coast and inland together. Fifty tribes of Athens send representatives to the Boule, that is the Council of 500. Each tribe is on duty for one month of the year, that's 10 months, which is called the Prytany. And that month they stay in the Tholos, or the assembly building. The strategoi generals are appointed, one per tribe, so there are 10 strategoi. And then the assembly, the ecclesia, are all Athenian citizens including the Thetes, and they meet four times each month, that is 40 times a year. Cleisthenes also introduced something called ostracism, which is a vote to get rid of a citizen for which you had to have 6,000 quorum. So the main question then is what happens after Cleisthenes? Well, if you go right back to um, earlier in this PowerPoint, Isagoras uh, lost out to Cleisthenes. Cleisthenes became um, you know, the, the most popular of the day. Um, and so Isagoras goes to Sparta and he asks the Spartan king for help. The Spartan king Cleonomes then attacked Athens and Cleisthenes is driven out. And so are 700 other Athenian families in 507 BC. That is his first attempt to take Athens. So the Spartans basically, Isagoras goes to Sparta, and then the Spartans attack Athens and drive out Cleisthenes. Cleonomes, the Spartan king, then tries to get rid of the Boule or the Council of 500 and replace it with an oligarchic government of 300. Oligarchy is rule of the nobles that he had appointed. The Athenians then rise up against the Spartans and they invite Cleisthenes back. Um, and then the Athenians turn to the Persians for aid against the Spartans. The Persians demand that they submit to them. Cleonomes again then tries to take over Athens a second time with a larger force from the Peloponnese, but the Corinthians withdrew from the alliance. And instead of taking over directly, Cleonomes then tries to turn Isagoras into a tyrant. Uh, ruling on Sparta's behalf in Athens, so this Athenian ruling on Sparta's behalf. 
The co-king of the Spartans and the Corinthians withdrew their support for Cleonomy's attempt to turn Isagoras into a tyrant. And on a third occasion, Cleonomy's then tries to reinstate Hippias as a tyrant. And again, the Corinthians objected. Hippias then fails to become a tyrant with Spartan support. So he went to Persia to gain help. And the Athenians also sent a delegation to the Persians to ignore the claims of Hippias. And at the end of the 6th century BC, Athens is in great danger and then the Persians try to invade. So really after Cleisthenes, what happens is that the Spartan king turns to his rival Isagoras, drives out Cleisthenes, tries to replace Cleisthenes with an oligarchic government. Uh, Cleisthenes returns. Um, Cleonomes then, try, uh, the Spartan king, tries to get Isagoras to become the tyrant on Sparta's behalf. That fails and Hippias, Pisistratus, the tyrant's son, is uh, then supposed to be ruling Athens on um, Cleisthene, on um, Cleonomy, Sparta's behalf. That fails and basically Hippias, uh, the tyrant from Athens, then goes to Persia to try to get some help. Hopefully that helps you.